Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. And today we're going to continue our series. This is Tristan. He's a corgi, and we're here for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. We're going to continue our series about um, hospice care and end-of-life issues related to pets. And today we're going to talk about the role of your veterinarian at the end of life or during hospice care because this is very important and cannot be underestimated. Um, the vet that may help you for end of life issues may not be the same vet that you've had working with you all along with your pet. In many cases, you are fortunate that that can be true, but not always. We have a woman around here who's a vet who does a lot of going to people's homes to help them with end of life issues with their pets. And um, she is not terribly popular otherwise, and a lot of people will have her only one or two times prior to the end of their pet's life, but she is spectacular in that end of life process. And the fact that she will come to your house is a huge comfort for people with really big dogs or <clears throat> other issues going on where they don't want to bring their pet to the office for a variety of reasons. So there may be some vet in your area that does sort of things like that. And I would definitely call around and ask some people um, if they know a vet that does that sort of thing. Um, if that's not the case, it's often helpful to know where your pet will be going, um, to be familiar with the vet's office, where your pet may have to go, um, and also to uh, talk to other people about their experiences. Um, some people have reported to me that they've had experiences with vets telling them to put their dog down when it was not time and the dog lived like six more months. So as with everything, take all advice with a grain of salt and get a second opinion, especially with something as important as this. If you're providing hospice care for your pet, your vet is an integral part of that process. Your vet will be providing you with pain medications. If your animal is in pain, they can uh, do blood work and urinalysis to determine if your pet is in a situation where um, hospice may no longer be the appropriate way to go and they can advise you with what to do for your pet medically during that whole process of them leaving the earth plane. Certainly with that horse I worked with, we had the vet coming every day to check on him and monitor his vitals and see how he was doing. So your vet is a really important process, part of the process of end of life issues for your pet. Um, and certainly for horses, this is also the case. Um, many of us only have one or two horse vets at our disposal because uh, the days of people wanting to get in the car and drive around and spend a lot of time out in the field are getting smaller and smaller. And we see more and more places where you have to throw your horse in the trailer, not literally, but put him in the trailer and take him to a vet. So um, in that case, you may not have as many choices. And often the people in the barn can be a huge resource. Many Barn managers, um, maybe vet techs, or you may have a vet tech boarding a horse at your barn. So you have access to someone who can give your horse um, painkillers and, and shots if they need it. Um, you also may need to involve your vet in terms of keeping IV fluids going for your pet during the hospice process. So your vet can be your best partner in this process. So it is important to have a great rapport with your vet and to establish that far ahead of the time when you're gonna need your vet to help you. Sadly, my best partnership with my local vet, um, that vet left the area and so I do have several other vets I've had a rapport with for many, many years um, that would be my number one resource um, now that I don't have that vet. But for instance, your vet, if they are available, um, because some vets are so busy, and if you're going to one of those big clinics, you just had to put your mom in hospice. Oh yeah, doctors are very important as our vets. And, and really for people, the pain management part of it is a big deal. Um, and mostly all the modalities we'll be talking about over the next few days have um, a relevance in terms of pain management. So, um, was I saying about vets? Uh, so a lot of times, oh, your vet will be your resource after your pet is gone. Um, my good pal vet that moved away um, was the first person I called when my dog Comet died here in my living room. Um, and he 
is a very different kind of vet. He's a very spiritual person and he knows that end of life issues take precedence over everything. And so he made the time in his day to answer my call and to talk to me about Comet and reassure me that my care was um, very, very high quality for him. And, you know, just to listen to me talk about him. Now, for many of us, our vet may not be the person to do that. You may have a good friend um, and it may even be somebody that you know for Facebook. I have several quirky friends I know from Facebook that if I called them and said that I had a problem with one of my dogs, I know that they would be there for me in a way that a lot of my more local friends would not be. So really important to know who your friends are for that situation and have them in the back of your mind because when you need them, you might not be thinking that clearly. Um, some people even write down a list of things like the name and town of the place where you can bring your pet for cremation, um, the names of some people and how to reach them that may be helpful to you. Um, also the name and phone number of a big medical center that may be the university near you or it may be like the pet emergency clinic a place like that uh, the names of several vets and their phone numbers and just keep it as you would any sort of emergency uh, papers in your house a list of things like that can be super helpful including the names of those vets um, and as i've mentioned here a few times one of the corgi people got a candle to put outside of the vet's office where uh, animals are taken to have um, to cross the rainbow bridge to be put down and that when that candle is lit there's a little note that says somebody is saying goodbye to a beloved pet um, please act accordingly and, and be respectful and that's a nice thing that you can do for your vet <clears throat> if the office is big enough and if they do you know not all vets put down that many animals a month i know that it's far fewer than we all imagine um, and so in some places that might not work out so well. Um, sometimes you can just add like a thumbtack on the wall with a lighted string for your vet's office for this sort of a thing with a little, or, or even just uh, the lights around something to hang on the wall if the office is crowded. But I think it is really important to have um, respect around the situation for people. There have been times when people have come out of an office carrying a pet when I've been waiting for something, you know, routine with my pet and I've taken the time out of my day to comfort them and ask them to tell me about their pet. So you can do that as well when you're at your vet's office. But your vet is a very important part of the end of life process for your dog and or your cat or your horse and you should know who those resources are in your area because you may need them in a flash and not be able to um, spend two days thinking about what to do. So do consider that ahead of time. And again, mostly it's in regards to pain management. And if you have chosen hospice care, there may be a point when you wanna end hospice care and help your animal across the rainbow bridge. So in that case, your vet is again gonna be your resource and you wanna let them know, if you have a regular vet that you see, you wanna let them know that you are choosing hospice for your pet and describe to them what you're doing and get their allegiance because it is going to be really important um, that you have a good rapport with a veterinarian to do the hospice process and lots of places have vets that may offer that as part of their work i know my sister's taken a course in hospice care through the chi institute which is a giant continuing ed um, facility in florida where they teach acupuncture and chiropractic as well as end of life issues and so that again means that there's a growing popularity of vets skilled in these areas. Um, but in some towns, there's somebody like me, um, you know, I'm a holistic physical therapist for pets, or there may be um, a retired nurse even who is working in this area to support people with end of life issues with their pets. So check that out as well. It may be surprising who is in your area that may be able to help you. Um, so it does behoove you to spend a little time and check this stuff out, but make sure you have an excellent rapport with your vet and that they are on board and aware of what you're doing. And if your vet can't do that, find a vet that will, because you will need a vet through the hospice process. We are lucky we have a great vet. Yeah, we all are lucky when we have a great vet. That's the truth. I know one of my horse clients, she uses three different vets. She has two horses and she kind of rotates through them and has a different one for lameness, then for colic, then for um, routine vaccinations and things. 
um, just so that she has the right vet when she needs somebody who's a specialist um, available to her and they all think that they are you know her favorite vet um, and they're aware that she has several vets I mean in this time of you know lots of people have several vets because there are more and more specialties um, of orthopedics and neurology and seniors and feed and you know all the other things that go along with veterinary specialties so make sure you know who your vet is and you know which vet you need to call if you want to um, help your animal across the bridge at home or if you're going to need to bring him to an office and if you are choosing hospice care make sure you know of a vet in your area who can support you in that journey because it really is something that you need a lot of help with so thanks for joining us today that was another episode of conversations with a corgi and we will be back we're at our educator job monday and tuesday right tristan Wednesday, we're supposed to drive to New Jersey for Thanksgiving, so I don't know that we'll be doing this Wednesday, but and certainly Thursday we might not, but I'm going to try to squeeze a quick one in on Wednesday morning. So, we'll see you then. Everybody have a great day. My body is very sore from cutting up the tree that fell on my dog fence. The fence is crushed. My lilacs are crushed. I'm very emotional about my lilacs, but... <laughs> I love them, but the tree has been cut up and hauled away. Now we have to get the fence fixed. <laughs> right, Tristan? Got to keep you safe. Keep out the big things and keep in the little things. <laughs>